Uncle Benjamin. It's just so good. You can hear me say that a lot, by the way. Seasons 1 to 4 of Game of Thrones simply is the Tyrion Lannister show. And Jon Snow. Jon fucking Snow. Ah, Elia Martell. Valerian Steel, Valerian Steel. I'm like, what do you fucking do? What does Valerian Steel even do? I can't believe that Jon Snow died. Na 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 na. think about Game of Thrones season 6, the more I've realised that I just, I love it. It's so good. Everything from the music to the cinematography, to the action, to the acting, it's just, it's one of the best. Now, since he wasn't in season 5, let's talk about Bran, shall we? Because I found Bran's side quest of finding the Three-Eyed Raven to be quite interesting, because I thought it was going to build up to something. And it does, but it also doesn't. Seeing Bran revisiting key moments in the history of Westeros like Ned Stark vs Sir Arthur Dayne was pretty awesome, especially as that fight is a pretty sick fight. I also like seeing the extent of Bran's powers, like how he basically ruined Hodor's life by messing up his mind and showing him his death in order to get Hodor to hold the door in present day. It's some crazy time travel logic and I love it. And when Bran and Mira are on the run from the Whites and they get saved by none other than mother frickin' Uncle Benjin, I flipped out. I was like, I thought he was dead! I mean, he technically is dead, like he's in between life and death, but regardless of the fact, he's still alive! Yes! Uncle Benjamin. Speaking of someone we all thought was dead, the Hound's alive, and he's living with Ian McShane. That's nice. I mean, they basically turned the Hound into Wolverine at this point. You know, as soon as Ian McShane and his group are murdered by a rogue faction of the Brotherhood without banners, and the Hound just goes ape shit and starts killing them all, yeah, he's basically Wolverine. I just, I love the Hound, and I'm glad they brought him back. I do also like the way we complete Arya's little journey in Bravos. how she realises that she doesn't want to just be an emotionless killer, she wants to kill people for the right reasons, mainly to avenge her family, but she wants to kill people for the right reasons. And I think that's the lesson that Jacques and Hagar was trying to teach her in the first place, and that he knew that she kept Needle, so that's why he lets her leave at the end. I don't know, that's just how I read Arya's time in Bravos. Now Danny finally gets her act together. She retakes the city of Marine from the Masters, and now she's ready to sail to Westeros to reclaim the Iron Throne. Fucking finally! And Amelia Clark just has so many great moments this season. Her burning the Kalasars alive was just awesome, and I adore her speech she gives to her Dothraki blood riders. And I don't know if it's just me, but does anyone else find it incredibly sexy when Amelia Clark speaks High Valyrian or Dothraki? Even during her big Nazi-esque speech during Game of Thrones season 8, I couldn't help but just go, damn girl! I also did find it funny that by the end of the season, Varys just kept teleporting from place to place, especially when he's on the ship sailing to Westeros with Danny, when Literally, the last time we saw him, he was in Dawn. It was just, it was very strange. Now let's get to the real meat of Season 6, which is the Jon Snow storyline. Season 6 is just incredibly Jon Snow heavy, and I love it. I mean, why wouldn't I? He's one of my favourite characters. Now, I knew he came back from the dead, and to be honest, it was a little bit predictable that Melisandre would bring Jon back to life in the same way Thoros would bring back Beric Dondarrion a few seasons ago. But regardless of all that, it was still pretty awesome to see. Especially since Kit Harington played that scene so well. The way he manages to play vulnerability, fear, and relief all in that one scene is incredible. And who doesn't just love the scene where Jon hangs Thorn and Ollie? You can just see the betrayal on Jon's face when he looks at Ollie, who just says nothing. It's really powerful stuff. And Jon has probably one of the best mic drop moments to end an episode ever. My watch is ended. What's even more powerful about season 6 is just how much it does in terms of emphasising how much Jon Snow actually is the son of Ned Stark. I love the little bit where he listens to everyone's final words, as it's a callback to Ned's teaching of, if you would take a man's life, you owe it to him to look him in the eyes and hear his final words. And if you cannot bear to do that, then perhaps the man does not deserve to die. Also, Alistair Thorne dies like an absolute boss. I mean, his final words are savage. I had a choice, Lord Commander. Betray you, or betray the Night's Watch. If I had to do it all over, knowing where I'd end up, I pray I'd make the right choice again. I also love the parallel between Jon and Thorne when Jon's talking to Sansa and he says how he's tired of fighting, even going as far as to say, I fought. And I lost. But I really like how he doesn't say, and now I rest, because he knows that he has to reclaim Winterfell back from the Boltons. Oh yeah, speaking of which, finally something fucking happy happens in the show. Jon and Sansa's reunion was so freaking good. Even though they weren't the closest, their reunion just meant so much. I mean, after everything they'd been through, just 
It was so good. And I love this little moment too. Can you forgive me? There's nothing to forgive. Forgive me. All right. All right, I forgive you. It's just so heartwarming. This is also the season where John and Tormund also become a comedic duo. I just love the, I'm not a god exchange. I know you're not a god. What kind of a god would have a pecker that small? Now let's talk about the Battle of the Bastards, shall we? Because what a beautiful episode. That episode is exceptional. Ramsay Bolton finally gets his comeuppance. I mean, this guy is a shithead. He's worse than Joffrey. I mean, he rapes Sansa, he tortures Theon, he kills his stepmother and stepbrother by feeding them to his dogs, he kills Rickon, he's just the worst. When Jon starts to beat the absolute shit out of him and Sansa feeds him to his dogs, like, good riddance. I hate this guy. Now, there are two ways to look at the Battle of the Bastards. One is from a thematic standpoint, and the other is from a strategic standpoint. Strategically, yes, Jon was being a bit of an idiot and should have lost. Even when Sansa warned Jon that Ramsay would try to bait him out into messing up, he still falls for it anyway. Then again, he was trying to save his brother, so I can kind of see from an emotional standpoint why he would fall into it, but just... Come on, there are other things to complain about too. Like, why did you not give one one a tree branch? There are a bunch of trees behind you, have him rip one up. But from a thematic standpoint, the Battle of the Bastards works on every level. It's such a good episode. At this point in time, Jon doesn't actually know why he was brought back from the dead. His faith is shaken, and it seems like he's just testing the idea that he was brought back by the Lord of Light for a reason. Which is why I love the moment where Ramsay's army is just charging at Jon, and he unbuckles the scabbard and unsheaths Longclaw knowing that he won't need it again. It's just beautiful. It's also really impressive when you find out that this shot was done practically, like, that's insane. Jon being anointed the King in the North was just such a phenomenal scene. From the performances, I mean, who doesn't love Lyanna Mormont? There's this little exchange between Jon and Lord Glover. And ask forgiveness. There's nothing to forgive, my lord. To the dialogue and for what it does to Jon's character. The bastard who had nothing is now king in the frickin' north. It's just so good, and in many ways I wish that this was sort of the ending for the show, because the ending we get is pretty crap. But it also feels like Jon has completed his character arc, there's nothing much more to do with his character. Especially since the show doesn't even bother trying to progress him in the next couple seasons. Plus it's just a happy ending for the Starks. Oh, sorry, did I say that Jon was a bastard and Ned Stark's son? Oh no 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 no! The biggest reveal, and the reveal that went right over my head, was that Jon is actually the son of Rhaegar Targaryen and Lyanna Stark. And that he is not only not a bastard, but he's also the one true heir to the Iron Throne. It's funny, when I first watched the scene I actually thought that Jon was actually the son of Ned and Lyanna, and I thought they were doing some weird Lannister shit, but no. I was just really dumb and didn't pay attention to what the hell happened in Robert's Rebellion. Now, Jon being the heir to the Iron Throne is not only just a big thing because he's actually the heir to the Iron Throne, but it's also the fact that Ned Stark tainted his own honour and his own relationship with his wife in order to protect his sister's son. The more you think about it, the more heartbreaking it is. Catelyn Stark had no reason to hate Jon Snow whatsoever. The scene she has with Talisa in season 3 about how she couldn't stop hating Jon even though he was just an innocent child becomes even more powerful when you realise that all the hatred she had was completely undeserved. And although the reveal doesn't add too much to the show going forwards, it does add so much to the previous seasons. Specifically the scene where Jon says goodbye to Bran in season 1 episode 2. When Ned walks in on the two of them in that scene, you can just feel the tension because we know that Catelyn's resentment towards Jon is just completely undeserved. It's just so powerful. And the transition from baby John to present day John is one of the most slickest edits in the entire show, especially with this rendition of the Stark theme playing. It's just, ah, it's just, it's so good. In fact, the finale to season six is one of the most stylish and well-directed episodes of the entire show. The thing I love about it is just how simple yet stylish the cinematography is, especially when Tommen commits suicide. So Cersei blows up the Sept with wildfire, killing the High Sparrow, Loras Tyrell, Marjorie Tyrell, and a few others. And thank god the High Sparrow is dead because there's only so much jargon you can take before you just want to Die. And the theme Light of the Seven playing in the background during that moment was just incredible. It's just such a beautiful piece of music. But then we cut to Tommen's reaction to all of this. The shot is locked down and it's all done in one take. Tommen takes off his crown, walks off screen, the tension then builds because we're subconsciously thinking why hasn't it cut yet? And then poor Tommen just jumps out the window. It's a genuinely shocking moment. I mean, poor Tommen! He didn't deserve that. He was just a sweet innocent little boy, like... 
Oh, man. Yes, he was manipulated by the High Sparrow and Marjorie Tyrell, but he didn't deserve any of this. In fact, if Tywin was still alive and was able to actually counsel Tommen, I think Tommen would have been a fantastic king. But alas, Cersei is now queen, all of her children are dead, she has nothing to lose and nothing to hold back. It's just a shame that we never really pay any of this off. Just... <sighs> but you know what does pay off? Arya killing Walder Frey. Like when she slits his throat, I'm like, yes Arya, you murder filch! You go girl! For hands of gold are always cold, but a woman's hands are warm. I haven't got much to say about season 7 of Game of Thrones other than it's good. I liked it. There's good things that happen in it. It's a good season. Yes, the writing gets a little lazy with the introduction of fast travel and a few plot contrivances, but other than that, it's a good solid season of television. Arya kills the whole of House Frey and then chills with Ed Sheeran in the woods for a bit. I like that. Actually, why did people hate Ed Sheeran's cameo? I thought performance-wise he was really good, and the song he sings is an absolute banger. I'm just shocked that there isn't a full version of it because I really want it. It's so good. For hands of gold are always gold and a woman's hands are warm. I liked how Brienne was able to fulfill her oath to Catelyn Stark as she managed to reunite both Arya and Sansa Stark and bring them back home. Although it was completely by coincidence, but who cares? It's a great moment. I also like the little finger arc this season, how he tries to turn Sansa and Arya against each other. And both the Stark girls not only played Littlefinger, they played me, because throughout the entire season, I was just like, Sansa, why are you doing this? Why are you being so annoying towards Arya? Because I prefer Arya over Sansa, and so when Sansa just kept being all snobbish and bitchy, I was just like, why are you doing this? But when it's actually revealed that they're holding a trial for Littlefinger instead of Arya, I was like, bravo girls, wow, you played me! And that was the moment when I was like, oh right, yeah, okay, I like Sansa again, she's good. I like Jon Snow meeting Daenerys for the first time. Yes, their relationship was rocky, but that led to some good conflict. She didn't trust him, he didn't trust her, until she found out that the stories of the dead were true. It was good stuff. Although, what the hell is Davos' introduction to Jon to Daenerys? Like, I'm sorry, Davos is an MVP. He's one of the great supporting characters. He's a legend. He is awesome. He was Hand of the King to Stannis Baratheon. And yet, this is how he introduces Jon? This is Jon Snow. He's King in the North. What the hell, Davos? That was piss poor. Luckily, this is also the season where we see Tyrion and Jon reunite, and their dynamic is pretty great. I've, I've loved them since season one. It's like my two favorite characters reuniting once again. It's great. Speaking of face-to-face -face reunions, Jon's confrontation with Theon was an amazing scene. You could just tell that despite Jon being mad at Theon, he still does care for him, and I just love it when he tells him that he's a Greyjoy and a Stark. The Lannisters taking Highgarden was also pretty badass too. Jaime galloping on his horse to the reins of Castamir was pretty sick. Bronze saves Jaime from Drogon, which was really great character development. It's just a shame that that never really sticks. To be honest, there's only two things that really bothered me about Season 7. That being, Euron Greyjoy, absolutely terrible. He was so annoying. He acted like he was this weird, like, rock star, like, Jack Sparrow wannabe. It was just really bad. All he did was just brag about how good he is and that he wants to bang the queen. And the Beyond the Wall episode, although having some great comedic moments and banter, just, it's a bit messy, isn't it? Why does the group go on foot instead of on horse? Why can Gendry run for miles in the freaking cold and not die of pneumonia? What the hell is this zombie polar bear? How does Danny get Beyond the Wall as quick as she does when she's all the way back in Dragonstone and doesn't even know where the hell the wall is? Why does Jon decide to keep fighting the dead when he could have gotten on Drogon? How the hell does he not freeze to death when he's submerged in icy water? But most importantly... Uncle Benjamin. Oh, and this episode also gives me another reason to hate the Night King. This guy can literally pick up an ice spike, throw it at a dragon, and kill it first try. I'm sorry, what? No. You're too OP. Fuck you. Fuck off. Fuck you, fuck you, fuck you, fuck you. I'm sorry, I, I told you, the Night King brings out something really bad in me, I'm, I'm sorry. But I will say, Season 7 does end strongly. Cersei betrays Jon and Danny and refuses to fight the dead. Jaime then leaves Cersei in order to fight for the living. And the Night King bringing down the wall with the help of the undead Viserion was truly a spectacular sequence. You cannot watch that sequence and not think, oh shit, they're gonna get fucked. They spun around on the damn pole stones. Spun a whale, her sorrow and pain. The first two episodes of season 8 are absolute gold. Well, aside from one too many cock jokes, but nevertheless, they're still great episodes. 
I also find it funny how these two episodes are the best episodes of the season, and they're not written by David Benioff and D.B. Weiss. So it's, uh, it's a little fishy if you ask me. These two episodes together do such an excellent job at not only bringing our characters together, but effectively building up the long nights. John reuniting with Arya just hit me right in the feels. The way he picks her up when they hug, to them just comparing their swords, and this little moment here. Have you ever used it? Once or twice. It's just, it's so good. Jamie arriving in Winterfell and seeing Bran for the first time was such an oh shit moment because obviously the last time they'd seen each other, Jamie had pushed them out a window. And it's even better when Bran says the line, the things we do for love during the trial of Jamie, because Jamie just got so shook. It, that was just great. The scene where Sam tells John about his true heritage was a fantastic scene. From the way Kit Harrington portrays John's reaction to this line right here. My father was the most honorable man I ever met. He lied to me all my life. It's just moments and dialogue like this that makes Game of Thrones such an amazing show. And it's something that the last four episodes of the season just lacked. You've also got moments like Jamie knighting Brienne and Podrick singing Jenny of Old Stone. The These two are my favourite moments of the entire season. First of all, Podrick has got some pipes on him. The guy can sing. Where is his version of Jenny of Old Stone? I want the full thing. I mean, I love the Florence and the Machine version, but... I want Podrick's version too. And secondly, I do have one tiny nitpick with that scene. It is basically them just ripping off the scene with Pippin singing from Return of the King. But regardless of all that, it does effectively build up to The Long Night. Okay, I've stalled long enough. Let's talk about... In my honest opinion, The Long Night is the worst episode of Game of Thrones ever. It's so bad. Not only does it make the entire White Walker subplot feel almost meaningless as they're able to take out the greatest threat Westeros has ever faced in one night, not only does it make the Night King look incredibly weak as he was taken up by a small knife to the gut, but it's also just so bloody dark that I couldn't even tell what the hell was going on. Like, when Theon died, I did not realise that the Night King broke his spear in two and stabbed him with one of the ends. I genuinely thought Theon just ran into the Night King and the Night King managed to like stab him with the blunt end of the pole. The battle strategy for this entire fight is terrible. Like, why weren't the trenches already lit? This is not a stealth operation. The enemy knows where you are, you've got nothing to hide. Why haven't you lit the trenches already? Or was it only just to give Melisandre a really cool moment? Why do all the Dothraki charge head on instead of attacking on two different fronts? Why are both John and Danny fighting in the clouds? Wouldn't it be better if one of them or both of them were perched on the battlements sending a continuous stream of fire at the dead? It's honestly just, it's so dumb. And I also hate the part in this episode where suddenly the episode just devolves into this scary sequence in a library. Like, what the hell? I wanted to see sword fights and Walker on human action, not Arya Stark running away from a couple of zombies in a scary hallway. I mean, even from a technical standpoint, the battle is just problematic. Having the Whites behave like the zombies from World War Z and have them piling upon on top of everything, it's just, it's not good. You've got way too many extras, and it leads to the show not being able to have awesome swordplay. Especially when we get moments like Jamie and Brienne and Podrick getting absolutely swarmed by the Whites, it just looks very stupid and funny. I honestly don't know why the writers didn't do what I just said earlier and have the dragons take out a massive chunk of the undead army, which then forces the White Walkers to actually have to, you know, fight? But no, apparently the showrunners and writers thought we'd rather see Brienne hug some whites as she's backed into a corner. <sighs> Speaking of battles, we don't even see Jon fight the Night King. Seriously, show? Really? You build up that these two characters are going to fight for almost three seasons now and they don't even connect blades once. What the- I genuinely guess that Benioff and Weiss thought that we the audience would appreciate Jon Snow jogging around the battle for a bit or screaming at a dragon. Not, you know, battling the devil himself. Also, fuck you Night King. Fuck you for raising the dead again. Fuck you. I hate you. You keep spamming that move. Fuck you, fuck you, fuck you. I hate you, I hate you, I hate you. Also, I you start killing the Night King was completely undeserved. I love Arya Stark. But she has nothing to do with the White Walkers. Why does she get the privilege of killing the Night King? Now, say if Jon had battled the Night King and was on death's door, and then Arya came in with an assist and stabbed the Night King, that could have been pretty good. 
But no, she just materializes out of thin air. What the? Now, I know there's this thing going around that when John is screaming at the undead Viserion, you can actually hear him yell, go, go, go. Which many have said that was him yelling at Arya to kill the Night King. But I'm sorry, if that's the case, that should have been way more specific and way more explicit because it just seems like hobbled together nonsense. Especially since there's no evidence in the episode itself. So the show doesn't make John King of the Seven Kingdoms. The show doesn't even make him king in the north. So what was the point of taking away the Night King kill from him? It honestly, it just, it bugs me. It really does. If you weren't going to let Jon at least become king, at least give him the chance to kill the Night King. In all honesty, this episode should have been a two-parter. They should have lost Winterfell to the Walkers, had a small group of them escape on Drogon and Rhaegal, and then regroup at King's Landing and force Cersei to fight with them. Because honestly, you cannot shortchange the audience on something that's been built up for eight seasons. I also really hate hearing the argument from some people saying that the White Walkers weren't that important and the show's all about the Iron Throne, because I'm sorry, that's just BS. If the White Walkers weren't important, then why were they the first things we see in the entire show? If the White Walkers weren't important, then why did we see them every season? If the White Walkers weren't important, then why did we see them being created? It was just, it's David Benioff and D.B. Weiss rushing things out so they could get onto their next projects, like Star Wars and their Netflix deal. But just, why? If they wanted to shorten the season and rush it, why not merge the Long Night with the attack on King's Landing? Have Jaime and Cersei die during the events of the Long Night, and then have Danny slowly go insane, have Jorah die, and then you could effectively build up to the big thing of Jon Snow killing Daenerys and Bran becoming king. But, nope. Just, we get this. Really? Now, as much as I'm just ranting and raving, there are some really good moments in The Long Night. The imagery in this episode is just absolutely stunning. I loved Theon's death and the way Bran told him that he was a good man. It was just such a perfect way to end Theon's character. Jorah's death and Danny's reaction was also pretty great. Amelia Clark just really tears it up in that scene. Melisandre's death was visually stunning, and the Night King theme is pretty awesome. In fact, the entire sequence of the Night King slowly walking towards Bran was just beautiful. Props to Raman Jawadi, the true hero of this season. His music was the main thing that kept the entire season together. half of season 8 is horrible. It really is. It's full of continuity errors, character assassinations, unmotivated character actions, horrible continuity errors. It's just... it's so bad. Honestly, the worst thing about these episodes is the writing. Everything looks spectacular, it's shot spectacularly, and it sounds spectacular. Just the writing really ruins it. Let's talk about character assassinations, shall we? Because there's four main big ones. John, Daenerys, Jaime, and Varys. Jaime Lannister is a great character, right? He starts off as a bit of a prick who likes to bang his sister, but after losing his hand and traveling with Brienne, he learns that he's actually a great and honorable man. An honorable protector of the innocent, even. So what the fuck is this? I never really cared much for them. Innocent or otherwise. I won't lie, when I first saw that scene, that line went right over my head because... I don't know why they thought they would write that. That is just the worst line you could write for the character of Jaime Lannister. Ever. This one line basically undoes Jamie Lannister's entire character arc from the last seven and a bit seasons. So I guess during his big Kingslayer monologue in season three, he's just making all of it up. It's all BS in order to get Brienne to trust him. And just the fact that he goes all the way back to King's Landing to be with Cersei again is just... It's ridiculous! What would have been more satisfying is if Jamie went to Mercy kill her. You know like how Jon does with Daenerys? It would have been so much better if that happened, but no! He dies with her. By a bit of rubble. How incredibly gripping. Also, why does he have to fight Euron Greyjoy? It's just, it's so fucking dumb and he dies for no fucking reason. It's stupid. <sighs> Speaking of which, what the fuck happened to Varys? What happened to the man who would do what was necessary for the realm? The man who would pull strings from the background, unseen. How is Varys in season eight remotely the same character as the one we'd seen in the previous seasons? And so he tries to write a letter, but fails to do it twice. First of all, why did he not finish off the first letter he wrote? All he did was cover it up. 
Secondly, you do realize, Varys, that there are other times of the day that you could be writing a letter, not just in the dead of night in your bedroom. Thirdly, why did you burn the other letter? And also finally, why the hell did Tyrion turn him over to Daenerys for treason? I thought they were friends. I don't want it. John. John, 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 John. What did they do to you? How did you go from brooding yet fun, loyal but willing to dissipate orders for the greater good, to a submissive, monosyllabic moron who only says the same three lines over and over again? I don't want it. I never have. Daenerys is our queen. You are my queen. I don't want it. And that's what I told him. You are my queen. I don't know what else I can say. I don't want it. I never did. You are my queen. I don't want it. I never did. Shut the fuck up. Do you remember when Jon Snow used to stand up to the views that he opposed? Yeah, so do I. I honestly just miss Jon Snow. Not this weird character that we get in season 8. Him saying the same three lines over and over again was just an absolute piss take. Like, I know repetition is good in writing sometimes, but having your character say the same three lines over and over again? No, that is horrific writing. I honestly just feel so bad for Kit Harrington. Like, he's given nothing to work with, and you can tell he's really trying to give it his all. He's trying to at least make every line meaningful, even though his range of dialogue is literally condensed to three lines. I don't want it. I never have. And what's worse about the character of Jon Snow is that his Targaryen lineage means absolutely nothing. He finds that he's the heir to the Seven Kingdoms and does absolutely nothing. It's ridiculous. Every time somebody confronts him with it, all he says is, I don't want it. I never wanted it. Yeah, it would be really nice if you could explain why you didn't want it. Saying that he doesn't want it is all good and well, but the fact that he never tries to convince people like Varys as to why he doesn't want the Iron Throne is just so stupid, because maybe if he actually did that, then maybe they'd actually stop harassing him over it. And when Danny goes crazy during the Siege of King's Landing, why does Jon do absolutely nothing? You know, in my own head canon, I imagine Jon would just suddenly snap out of his weird trance he has with Daenerys because I don't bite that those two characters are in love, and he'd, you know, pull an Aragorn from Lord of the Rings and rally up his men, be like, I am Aegon Targaryen, the one true heir to the Iron Throne. And he would then lead a resistance against Daenerys, and he would sit on the Iron Throne, but that's just my own personal headcanon. I didn't actually want that to happen. Or maybe I did. Either way, it's much better than what actually happens in the show. Him just staring dumbly at his soldiers murdering and raping innocents? Just... What? Daenerys Stormborn of the House Targaryen, the first of her name, Queen of the Andals, Protector of the Realm, Lady of Dragonstone, Queen of Marine, Khaleesi of the Great Grass Sea, the Unburnt, Breaker of Chains and Mother of Dragons. Murderer of Millions. Danny's sudden spur of madness that caused her to burn down King's Landing wasn't justified at all. Yes, Daenerys has shown some cruel tendencies. Crucifying the Masters of Marine, burning both Randall and Dick on Tali, even though she could have imprisoned them. Even the way she tells Sam the way she executed them comes across as very insincere as cold. But regardless of all that, at the start of Season 8, it was not in Daenerys' character to kill millions of innocents, regardless of if she had just lost Jorah, Rhaegal, and Missande. If the writers wanted Daenerys to descend into madness, it should have happened organically. It should have been like how Azula descended into madness in Avatar The Last Airbender. Once her friends had betrayed her, Azula's already loose screw became even looser. She unraveled. She went insane. And Daenerys does have these cruel tendencies. So perhaps if the writers organically got Daenerys to the place where she went insane and burnt these millions of people to death, then I don't think anyone would have complained. But nope. It's not what happens in the show. She just burns down King's Landing. Now, regarding her and Jon's underdeveloped relationship. Now, the only reason why these two characters are together is because both of the actors are incredibly attractive. That's it. And their characters don't even really show any emotional investment in each other. Like how Jon tells Daenerys he's a Targaryen. He's revealing to her something that's really personal to him, and the only thing she can think of is that he has a claim to the Iron Throne. Yeah, I really buy that these two love each other. Now, the Siege of King's Landing is fine, it looks good, the Hound vs. the Mountain is pretty great, and I like how their rivalry begins with fire and it ends with fire. It's shot nicely, it's all well and done, but uh, it's a bit of a shame all Cersei did this season was stare out a window and get crushed by rubble. The series finale is a very strange episode, because in many ways, if you take it out of context and ignore the context of the previous episode, and instead imagine that Daenerys had slowly devolved into insanity, then it kind of works? I only say sort of because the episode is full of these weird moments, like Daenerys staring at Jon with contempt in one scene, 
but then the next time they see each other, she's got this loving look in her eyes. Now, there are some really great moments in the series finale, like Tyrion finding the bodies of Jaime and Cersei, and the pain on his face just says it all. Peter Dinklage, man. Hell of an actor. I also really like how he picks up a rock and smashes it three times, as it sort of makes the sound of goom, goom, goom. I don't know if I'm overanalyzing this moment, but I think this is the moment where Tyrion understood why cousin Orson smashed the Beatles. It was because he was feeling extreme pain. Now the throne room scene between Jon and Danny is a good scene. If you take it out of context. Both Kit Harrington and Amelia Clark are just amazing in this scene. Have you been down there? Have you seen? Children. Little children burn! You can just see the horror in Jon's eyes as to what Daenerys has become. And you can tell he's just desperate for Danny to give him a reason to not kill her. And in regards to Amelia Clark's performance, you can really just see how lost Danny has become. And I don't know if this is a digital effect, or if it's just how her eyes naturally look, but I love how big her eyes are when she grabs the Iron Throne, and the music when she touches it... Oof. So good. And the scene keeps going, and it's pretty good, until Benioff and Weiss decide to ruin the moment by having Jon say, You are my queen. Uh... Yeah, so Jon kills Daenerys, Drogon burns the Iron Throne, Jon gets arrested, Bran the robot becomes king. Like, really? Bran? Bran is made master of coin because that makes total sense. Sansa becomes queen in the north, Arya goes exploring, Jon gets sent to the Night's Watch again, even though there really shouldn't be a Night's Watch anymore, but whatever. Instead, he decides to go beyond the wall with the rest of the wildlings. <sighs> as disappointing as the actual ending is, I won't lie, the actual final sequence is really well shot and it's really well edited and performed. It's, it's good. But yeah, I guess Game of Thrones now joins How I Met Your Mother in the pile of good shows that had terrible endings. <laughs> Despite season 8 being pretty terrible, Game of Thrones is actually an amazing show. It is. It is phenomenal. There are just too many great characters, scenes, quotes, musical themes, battles to say that Game of Thrones is a bad show. Because it's not. These moments are still exceptional, regardless of the ending. Heck, even Season 8 has its groundbreaking moments. From an aesthetic point of view, Season 8 is amazing. From the cinematography, to the performances, to the costuming, to the lighting, to the visual effects, it's astonishing. And it's the best Game of Thrones has ever looked. It's genuinely just a shame that the writing is terrible. But regardless of all that, I still love this show. I may have been late to the party, but regardless of all that, this show is honestly great. It's so quotable, the battles are amazing, I love the characters. I mean, I will always remember Jon, Tyrion, Sansa, Arya, Rob, Ned, Theon, Ramsay, Joffrey, all of them. I will remember these characters, and it is just a great show. I love it. But yeah, that's what I think of Game of Thrones. I think it's a great show. But what do you guys think? Leave me a comment down below. Like and subscribe and all that good stuff. Hit the notification bell down there. My social media links are also down in the description. So if you give them a look and a follow, that'd be very nice. I have a second channel where I make short films. So if you check those out, that'd be really great. And until we meet again, I'll see you guys next time.